love, God is bring lovely person by next to me. And show how great he is. How merciful he is. Constantly showing to that person. So why am I be with this kind of person every day? I, why God just put me in this situation? In this place? I don't want to see him. See her. Why? God has a reason. Because his love to you. God loves you so much. I want you to build my character, my son's character. I want you to understand this is my original plan. I'm trying to put my son's image into your life. But you refuse. That's his message. Just submit your will to me. I'll do the rest of the work for you. Just be gentle, nice. Don't talk too much. Use gentle words. The rest of the work is mine. I'm going to take care of it. That's his promise. But the problem is what? We don't do it. We don't let God do the rest of the work. No, God, wait, wait. This, I can't handle it. This is just a little thing. You don't have to do this. Let me handle it. What kind of bad? I'll give you much, much bigger thing than you. That I cannot handle, you do it. But this thing, it's okay. What's going to happen? will soon be burnt up. God, I thought you were with me, but you're not. Then we just are drifting away day by day. So, God is using this. Well, I just listed three things, but there are so many things in our lives to build our character, to mold our character, because that is the only thing we can bring into heaven, nothing else. I wish I could bring my iPhone into heaven, but he won't allow me. <laughs> Number three, community. What is community? What does it mean? It's like in your family, it's a group, small group, church. We need to build our relationship with God at the same time with people. Classic example is Martha and Mary. What did Martha do? You know, one day Martha and Mary invited Jesus to come over to their house for dinner. And Martha, so busy, cleaning and preparing gourmet food for Jesus. That is understandable. But when we read the Bible, that's the difference. We think that is very normal, ordinary things. Yeah. Of course, when you invite someone, we need to prepare something. But look at what Mary did. What did she do? Didn't do anything. She's just sitting at the feet of Jesus and talking to him and listening to him. So Martha got mad. She's a big sister, right? She cannot scold Mary because Jesus is there. She needs to show her character, gentleness. So instead, she's asking Jesus, why don't you rebuke my sister? She's not helping me. What did she expect for Jesus to tell her? Yeah, Mary's so bad girl. Okay, I'm going to rebuke. 
but rather, what did she just say? She had hurt me. Mary is doing the right thing. You are too busy. The dishwashing, making bad. What else? Cooking something you cannot bring into heaven. And also you can do it every day. But living by conviction, which is the word of God, the relationship with Jesus every day. It's not what you can do just three days later, a year later, maybe ten years later, because I know everything. No, we need to do it every day. That's what Jesus wants from us. He wants to have a relationship with us. This is the example. Mary is having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Martha? She doesn't have any relationship. Think about that. Come to church, do the Bible study, getting involved in a small group, but no relationship. But what she just wants is a relationship. We need to make our time, 30 minutes, at least 10 minutes a day, you need to find a quiet place to read and to talk to him. Problem is, we don't do it. I'll do it tomorrow, because today is so busy. God, I'll do it 20 minutes. Next day comes, oh, today I need to finish this. I'll do it 30 minutes tomorrow. And then one year later, I'll oh, just, I give up. This is our lives. We need to look back where we are. What if I had only 30, 30 days? To live here. What would I do? What is my pride? What is the things I desire to do? My life is terminated. In 30 days, I must go. What would I do? As if today, it's like the last day for me to live. That kind of lifestyles and attitude. Otherwise, we all, always procrastinate tomorrow. Tomorrow will come. We just think. I go to bed, I'll wake up tomorrow. That's true. But are we building something not here in heaven? And also, we need to build something for our children, our next generations. If we don't set a good example for them, what do they learn from us? It's a very important issue. We need to do something in the way they can see and they can verify with their own eyes. My parents is not just churchgoers, but they are showing real love, sacrificial love. That is what God wants from us. So God has given us time, energy, and the materials to live here on earth. My wishes, I want you to use those and utilize those things to make a legacy, which is eternal. So we need to do it every day. Otherwise, because of business, busy schedule, 
we forget about God totally. You know, one thing for sure is who's going to talk about God outside the world? Only time you listen or you talk about it is when you come to church. Even in your house, you talk about how, how often do you talk about God? We need to think seriously. God is everywhere. He wants to receive glory from us. But are we doing it? Are we doing his work? Are we following his command? Whatever you do without faith, Paul says, that's sin. God has given us faith and desire and passion to live this life for him. So, if you say, I don't have time to go into small group, your life is too busy, like Martha. You make everything complicated. But Mary is trying to make it simple. That's the priority. She knew what was the priority in her life. We need to prioritize the things. Make a list today. And think, cross out unnecessary things. If I had only 30 days or two weeks to live here on earth, what do I do? What is my priority? As we cross out, it will come down two or three things. Focus on that. Then He will bless you. The problem is we don't put it into practice. That's why we don't experience a living God in our lives. But once you do it, you will experience how loving He is, how great He is. So just the once in a life, we all know the knowledge, the Bible, scriptures, what is going on in the church? But what we lack? Experiencing God. We need to experience God personally. And then everything will come just turn upside down. Just like a pole. That is conviction. So when we live by conviction, we can obey and submit our wills to God and whenever the problems, pressures, no matter who, who are around me, we can manage, handle it. The way we can build a relationship. So first of all, whether we are in the relationship with Jesus, then we can build a relationship with others. So I just listed three things, conviction, character, community, building relationships. So whatever the resources God has allowed us to use and have, I want you to use for building a legacy for your next generation. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you again. We just came to the last principle, which we need to apply 